multi-axis deburring enables you to create three, four, and five-axis edge deburring operations where chamfers and fillets are not modeled. It supports faster part programming by automatically detecting edges and tilting the tool axis based on user intent to provide safe and efficient tool paths. Multi-axis deburring supports ball and spherical tools. Use 5-axis simultaneous to deburr edges and transition simultaneously in 5 axes. Use 4-axis rotary to deburr edges in 4 axes with the tool normal to a rotary axis. Use 4 plus 1 axis auto tilt to deburr edges simultaneously in 4 axes around a rotary axis and transition between edges by tilting in 5 axes. Use 3 axis to deburr edges and transition the tool along a fixed orientation. Use 3 plus 2 axis to deburr edges along a fixed orientation and transition between edges using 5 axis simultaneous motions. Let's take a look at some of the operation parameters that are available. For multi axis deburring under mill contour, the tool axis intent is set to 3 axis by default. 3 plus 2 axis is now available. 3 plus 2 axis is similar to 5 axis tilting. The difference is that the system tries to keep the tool axis fixed as much as possible. Collision checking can change the tilting to 5 axis simultaneous when necessary to avoid collisions. Fixed to main axis is now available for basic alignment when using a 3 plus 2 axis and 5 axis simultaneous intent. This option uses the specified tool axis as the main axis from which to reference the tilt and maximum angles. In this case, the positive ZM axis is referenced. The tool axis remains at a fixed angle to this axis but can tilt away when needed. Collision checking can tilt the tool away to avoid collisions. Blend Spline is a new transfer type available for all tool axes. This option uses a spline to create a smooth transition between cutting moves. Blend Spline will usually reduce the tool path length and hence the machining time. Several clearance options have been added. These options create an automatic safe clearance from the part geometry, the same as they currently do for other variable axis operation types. The available clearance options vary depending on the specified tool axis. Relief has been added to the inner corners options. Relief extends the tool path to deburr inner corners without adding a loop. Detect by height allows you to machine sharp edges in a specific area. The vector defines the reference axis, which specifies the direction in which the area will be limited. The start point defines the position with respect to the reference axis from where the limited area starts. The end point defines the position with respect to the reference axis where the limited area ends. Only sharp edges between these boundaries are considered. Variable guide and curve operations can now use wall stock to avoid embedding the tool or contacting unfinished walls. This can result in longer tool life and better surface finish. While NX can currently tilt the tool away from the wall, wall stock offsets the tool by adjusting the tool path within the cut area. Not applying wall stock may cause the tool to contact the unfinished wall, potentially compromising the surface finish. The specified wall stock is applied to all selected walls.
For variable guiding curve operations, tool axis interpolation can now be controlled in both the U and V directions. This provides better tool axis control, which can result in smoother tool paths and better surface finishes. In this example, tool axis interpolation is currently controlled only in the U direction. Notice how the tool axis swings from side to side because tool axis interpolation in the V direction is not controlled. The U and V control direction option is new. Tool axis interpolation is controlled both in the drive direction and across the pattern. As with other control direction options, you may select points and adjust the axes. The result is a more controlled tool axis. Variable guiding curves operations can now generate multiple cut depths, allowing you to remove material by machining toward the part geometry one cut level at a time. The multiple depths options are new. When turned off, multi-depth cut generates a single cut level that follows the part surface contours as variable guiding curves operations did previously. Part stock offset does not apply when multi-depth cut is turned off. Here you can see the tool is embedded. This can be solved by specifying multiple cut depths. When turned on, Multi-depth cut generates multiple cut levels, removing the specified part stock offset by the specified increment or number of passes. Cut level depths are applied by offsetting the original tool path along the tool axis. The tool is essentially pulled along the tool axis at any given point. Increment specifies how much of the part stock offset to remove for each cut level. If the specified increment does not divide evenly into the part stock offset, the system reduces the stock removed in the last cut level. Passes specifies the number of cut levels. The system calculates the depth of cut. In this video, we'll look at a sequence of operations, each containing an edit that improves the efficiency of the original multi-depth tool path. By doing so, we can also compare improvements in the operation machining time. In this multi-depth operation, you can see the tool cuts error. This can be solved by specifying Use3D for the in-process workpiece. Use3D restricts cutting moves to only those that remove material. Cutting moves that do not remove material are omitted from the toolpath. When applied to last pass is turned on, the final cutting passes closest to the part will only be made where there is significant material to be removed. When turned off, the finished passes closest to the part are cut entirely, whether or not there is significant material to remove. This is done to avoid lifting the tool on and off the final part surface, which might degrade the final part finish. Notice that lifting occurs in other areas where there is little material to remove. This can be solved by specifying the minimum amount of material to be removed. Minimum material removal prevents the tool from lifting where there are small amounts of material, allowing for a continuous smooth cut. Notice there are an excessive number of engages and retracts. This can be solved by specifying a merge distance. Merge distance connects non-contiguous cutting segments to create continuous cuts without retracting. The tool path can be further improved by alternating cuts from the outside in. Setting the cut order to outside in alternate allows the tool to move smoothly from one cut pass to the next. Notice how the machining time has improved from the initial multi-depth cut operation.